This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. For your information, an international tournament was held in Hazelton over the weekend. We'll tell you about it next. It's a new week of local information on SSP TV. Thank you for watching. I'm Ken Carr, and here's today's information from FYI and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. And we begin with an update on a special initiative to benefit Divine Providence Sh Homeless Shelter in Hazelton. SSP TV, along with our media partner, the Standard Speaker, and the United Way of Greater Hazelton, recently launched a project called Giving Shelter. Here's Lisa Sugar with the latest. The campaign entitled Giving Shelter continues to benefit Divine Providence Shelter in Hazleton. Today I'm pleased to be joined by Mary Jo Pancala. She is the shelter coordinator for what is known as Divine Providence Shelter in Hazleton. And we are here at Catholic Social Services. The collections are coming in, but you still need much more help. It's a constant. It's a constant thing. Think of your own home. You know, you're running out of sugar, coffee, uh, coffee filters, that sort of thing. Well, multiply that by 20. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So we do have things, items coming in, and it's wonderful. We're so grateful for everything because it, it just helps us serve these, these residents better. Uh, but it's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. Now, there are certain items that you definitely need, so give us a rundown of the things that our viewers could provide for you. Okay, it's the, the not sexy stuff. <laughs> we need socks underwear, uh, warmer clothing, obviously, gloves and hats are going to, and scarves will be big. We're, we're getting some coats coming in now in anticipation of the colder weather. Um, hand warmers, that's wonderful. Like when they're, the, because when they leave our shelter at eight o'clock in the morning, they're on their own until seven o'clock that night. So it, it can get cold out there. We provide meals. At the, at the shelter, we provide uh, a meal in the evening, plus some, some sort of breakfast to get them uh, a good start in the morning. So we're, we're always in need of paper goods, uh, or styrofoam plates, styrofoam coffee cups, those kinds of things, paper plates, napkins. You, whatever you use at home, think about it. That's what we need at the shelter. Coffee and sugar. We can't keep them on the on the shelves, uh, especially as it gets colder. The the use is increasing now. And you're also looking for people to make meals for you. So how do they go about that? How much do they make? What do they do? Okay, that's a great question. Um, I have a wonderful volunteer, Judy Hall, who has uh, taken on the great task of coordinating the wonderful volunteers. Uh, each evening, a group of either from like churches or other agencies such as that, but also sometimes they're groups of friends. And they'll, they'll sign up for a particular day and bring enough food for, to feed between 16 and 20 people. And if, if they can uh, say they provide the main dish, but they can't bring the beverages, oh, that's okay, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that. But anything is a help, you know. If they want to bring the whole meal, that's a help too. And we were talking and said, if you could freeze meals in advance, but you don't have the space for that, so you need a freezer too. <laughs> we need freezers, yes. And our, our, uh, we will be ordering foods in bulk and making them available. Uh, my goal is to make them available to the volunteers because it's a big cost. And some volunteers bring a meal every week, and it's a big cost. We understand that. So, uh, yeah, we need, we need things uh, to store it. All right, so if you can donate a freezer, they would be more than willing to take that as well. But please, all the items that Mary Jo talked about are desperately needed. The campaign goes through November 21st. Drop-off bins here at Catholic Social Services, the United Way, the Laurel Mall, the Standard Speaker, and of course at our studios at SSP TV. An international event was held at the Greater Hazelton YMYWCA over the weekend. The Y hosted the first International Open Karate Do Tournament. You're about to hear from the man who helped organize the event and Miss Fabergé who brought some excitement to the festivities with the dancers and tumblers from her studio. We are very happy because it's the first time in Haiti that we're going to have this open. And we have uh, competitors from different countries, from Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and the different state of the United States. That would be very exciting days for us and also for Hazington. And I was asked if I would please bring my beautiful dancers, the Fabergé girls, <laughs> to provide some opening ceremonies, just like in the Olympics. 
Yes, and then uh, in addition, I will be the mistress of ceremonies. Rinzo Kukai Karate School in Hazleton was the local group who got the tournament together. The international tournament was held for those four years old and up. Yesterday was the perfect day for a Halloween parade. Kids and pets alike decked in their favorite costumes processed down Main Street in Cunningham and went before the judges as part of the annual Halloween parade sponsored by the Cunningham Valley Civic Organization. We caught up with two of the participants. We are very excited. You know, a lot of people are from the Cunningham area, so they're happy to come home and, you know, show their stuff. What does it mean when the little kids are all clapping and smiling as they see the band go by? Oh, it's so rewarding, you know, like coming into an area and just knowing that we're making people happy is the reason why we come out and do this. Tell me what you are here today. Uh, a fireman. And what are you inside of? This is really cool. It's a fire engine. And what does it have on it? Um, a, a siren. The parade made its way to the CVCO building where awards were presented and the children received a bag of candy. See more of the parade during a Halloween special of the girls which will air next Friday at 9 p.m. On Saturday evening, a first of its kind race was held at Eagle Rock Resort in Drums. Community Services for Sight in Hazleton hosted its very first Glow Run, a 5K run and walk in the dark, along with a one-mile youth race. Participants of all ages received glow sticks that they could use as they went along the course. Some others also brought flashlights. Awards were presented, including an award for Best Costume. And all proceeds benefit the many services provided by Community Services. Services for sight. Well, coming up on FYI, we'll talk about a huge sports weekend for fans in Hazleton as Joe Madden and the Chicago Cubs move on to the World Series. Plus, all unveil our Week 9 high school football cool scale rankings. And when we come back, Lisa Sugard has information on a race held in memory of a local boy who died from pediatric brain cancer. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. Hi everybody, it's Monday and I'm Christy Book. I'd like to welcome you back to Core Fitness. It's been a while since we've seen you. And if you haven't seen my segment, I have talked about everything from working out with an injury to working out post baby. And today I would like to focus on something that's very near and dear to my heart. We um, have got a great reputation for several boot camps that go on here. Um, and dozens of women have been through our doors. And I'd like to introduce you to my friend Stephanie Watson, who is the instructor of Steph hit boot camp here at Core Fitness and I've known Stephanie a couple years uh, we met actually working out together back at the good old YMCA and she actually is probably the best poster child for her own boot camp so Stephanie didn't always look like this <laughs> if only Not that I she had ever looked bad she did not I had the before and after photos <laughs> but uh, Stephanie is in fantastic shape um, she's helped women lose pounds inches gain self-esteem and I'd like to ask you a couple questions so how many boot camps is this now that you're doing? We've been running it two and a half years. We've taken roughly maybe four weeks off in that two and a half years. Um, mostly eight week boot camps, so I'm not even sure anymore how many. Okay, and so the boot camps run what times? We run 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. They are about a 45 minute class and they run Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay, so Stephanie, I'd like to hand it over to you. She's gonna talk to you with one of her boot camp girls who's gonna tell her her experience. And this is my friend Lori Kane. She's been actually attending boot camp now for two and a half years. She started the first boot camp and hasn't missed one since. Um, she actually started from a friend's suggestion that she come and she avoided it like the plague for the first, you know, couple weeks before it actually started. But then she started and now she is, without a doubt, one of my biggest advocates and one of my biggest PR people. So this is Lori Kane. So I started boot camp at the request of one of our, our friends who do, comes to Core Fitness and she suggested to me, you should do hit boot camp with me. 
and I said to her, Michelle, you are athletic, I am not. I go to the gym because I like to eat. And this basically all works out. So I ended up, I took her advice because I thought, what do I have to lose but weight? And quite honestly, it's been one of the best things I've ever done for myself. Not only has it made me a healthier person, but more tone, stronger, my stamina. I mean, I impress myself when I'm in a walk with someone and I'm passing out more fit people than me. And I owe it all to coming to Core Fitness and in particular coming to Steph's boot camp on a faithful basis for the past two and a half years, three days a week at six in the morning. All fitness levels are available and welcome. We can modify absolutely anything. Um, and one of my favorite things to say is that you can do any exercise for 30 seconds. Call Core Fitness 455-7818. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. It's definitely feeling like fall all around the area now consistently. Here's our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, partly cloudy, low of 34 degrees. We'll have a northwest wind around 14 miles per hour. Tuesday looks partly sunny with a high near 46. We'll have wind between 11 and 15 miles per hour. Tuesday night, partly cloudy, low of 29 degrees. Wednesday is mostly sunny, but we're only getting up in the mid 40s. Wednesday night, 20% chance of snow showers after 2 a.m. Mostly cloudy with a low of 30. Thursday, we will see rain. It's likely 60% chance cloudy with a high near 46. Thursday night showers likely again, mainly before 2 a.m. Low of 39 degrees on Friday. 30% chance of showers before 8 a.m. Partly sunny, high of 49. And then Friday night, mostly cloudy. We'll have a low of 38 degrees. I'm pleased to welcome to our studio today two young ladies that are involved with a very special event, the fourth annual Race Against the Odds being held in memory of Michael Balliot on Saturday, October 29th at the Valley Elementary Middle School in Sugarloaf. To my left is Patty Balliot, Michael was her brother, and also to my right is Ashley James, a cousin of um, the late Michael Balliot. I guess let's start with you, Patty. Um, I know you've been here before. This is the fourth year you're doing this in memory of your brother who passed away so young at the age of 12. Yes, Michael was a very active individual and we wanted to carry on his memory by doing something like that, um, a 5K foot race that really does encourage a healthy lifestyle because Michael was a very healthy um, little boy and he still lost his life to this devastating form of cancer. So it's pediatric cancer is what you're hoping to raise money to find a cure for that? Yes, the form of brain cancer that he had was diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma. Only about 350 kids in the United States get it each year and there is no cure for it. It's automatically terminal. So the money that you are raising now, where does that benefit? Um, it benefits the Cure Starts Now Foundation, which gives all of its resources to research for this specific type of cancer. And since it is a, such a hard type of cancer to cure, they're hoping to hit a home run cure and cure all types of cancer with it. Wow. Well, this is wonderful that you're doing this, keeping Michael's memory alive, but doing a lot of good to help other people. So I really commend you for what you've been doing. And your cousin as well, she wanted to get involved. And last year, you started a team of your own to be part of this race. So tell us about your team and invite people to get involved with it this year. Well, my team is Team Mick, Making It Count, and last year we raised over $800, so my goal this year is to raise $1,000. And I'd like everyone to join, and the money, you can register, well, to register, you can register online, and yeah, that's all. Okay, so they could go online and they can register to be part of the race or they can register that day, but they can also donate if they can't make it to the race or they're not a runner. Yes, they can donate. So you're encouraging a lot of people out there. You want them to get up off their chairs and get out and participate, whether you're a good runner or not, or this is the first time you're ever getting involved with this, right? Because you guys are really into this and you really want a successful event. Yes, we do. So I hope everyone can come. <laughs> what is the cost for registering for the race? The cost is $20. Okay. So if you would like to get involved, uh, this is the Race Against the Odds in memory of Michael Balliot. Again, it's, it's being held on Saturday, October 29th. The race time is? 9.30 a.m. and registration is at 8.30 a.m. All right. 
You heard it from Ashley. And the cost is $20. Again, you can register online. You can go uh, to the website, which is raceagainsttheodds.com. But you can also go to neparunners.com as well, too, right? And do it that way or donate that way. Yes, um, that takes you to our link, actually. And we've had a lot of success from the past using nepa-runner.com. It really spreads the word around not just Hazleton area, but all of northeastern Pennsylvania. We really want to keep it local and try to get as many to come out as possible. Well, again, a great event. Ashley, what was the reaction when you did this last year? How did it make you feel to know you were doing something to benefit your cousin's memory? I was just really happy because a lot of people came, which made me really happy. And I was just happy because that day I just ran for him. So well said. Two young ladies doing something wonderful uh, in memory of her cousin and brother, but we need your help to support it. So please go online and register or show up that day and register again October 29th at the Valley Elementary Middle School. We hope that there will be a ton of people out there in honor and memory of Michael. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Before we hit the break, here's your midday winning Pennsylvania lottery numbers on FYI. Your pick two numbers for one, pick three, nine, six, one, pick four, one, eight, nine, two, and pick five, seven, five, eight, three, nine. It's building up to be a great final week of the regular season for high school football. We have our full scale rankings after this break. This is FYI News 13 Sports. How was everyone's sports weekend? Did you have a good time? I did. Okay, so we have two more weeks, actually one more week, before we shut down the mines for the winter. Let's see how everyone is positioned in our penultimate high school football coal scale rankings. In the league night grade, we have two teams just busting to jump up in our rankings to the bituminous grade in Hazleton area and Monoy area. The Cougars won their second straight as junior running back Adrian Otero scored five touchdowns in their win over Dallas. Otero also recovered a fumble and returned it for a touchdown. Sparky Wolk had 172 passing yards and three touchdowns, and he picked off a pass on defense for the surging Cougars. Monoy area has their eye on a district playoff berth, and they snapped snapped a four-game losing streak with a win over Panther Valley. During their four-game losing skid, the Golden Bears were constantly turning the ball over while they had zero turnovers on Friday night. Quarterback Matt Lewandowski had five rushing touchdowns and 129 rushing yards. Tyler Cluel posted 151 rushing yards. On defense, Daniel Lawrence, Nick Cavanis, and Kyle Laughlin had interceptions, and Mark Lawrence recovered a fumble. Shenandoah Valley dropped to 0-9 with a loss against unbeaten in Schuylkill Haven. The Blue Devils have a chance for a huge win in week number 10 when they host rival Monoy area. In the bituminous grade, we have two other rivals who will meet in week 10. Marion slips down a spot after they were upset on Friday by Minersville. Marion had a chance to win, but they turned the ball over on downs with under 30 seconds left to play. The Colts turned the ball over twice and were held to 163 yards on offense. Tamaqua was blanked by North Schuylkill, who we will talk about right now as we look at the anthracite grade. North Schuylkill is our top team after their fourth shutout of the season. Major Jordan had 119 yards on the ground with two touchdowns, and quarterback Doug Wiest was 9 of 15 for 116 yards and a touchdown. The Spartans scored on three of their first four possessions and had that 19-0 lead at halftime. Can the Spartans hold their top spot? Will Tamaqua finish over Marion? Can Hazleton area and Monoy area jump into the bituminous grade? Find out next week in our final high school football coal scale of the season. The sports cast rolls on with Ron Marchetti. I believe he's talking baseball. I hope so because I saw him come in with a Cub shirt and Joe Madden pictures. Good luck to Joe Madden and the Chicago Cubs. Hi, everybody. It's the eve of the 2016 World Series. Welcome to Trivia Treats. Why not start with more October performing arts? Name the youngest and oldest pitchers to throw complete game shutouts in the World Series. Well, I'll make it easier for you. I'll give you the youngest. Jim Palmer of the Baltimore Orioles in 1966 was 20 years, 11 months, and 21 days old. So you have a little time to think who was the oldest. But before I give you the answer to that, how about some World Series costume trivia? Who is the only player who has appeared in the World Series with a record four different teams? The answer to that is Lonnie Smith, 
who play with the Phillies, Cardinals, Royals, and Braves. Forty years ago, yesterday in 1976, Cincinnati Reds catcher Johnny Bench smashed a two-run homer and a three-run homer to complete a World Series sweep with the New York Yankees. Bench hit 533 in that series. It would be the Big Red Machine's second straight world title under manager Sparky Anderson. The Reds won game four, seven to a Yankee Stadium. Bench knocked in five of those seven runs. That year again was 1976. If one pitcher is worth a thousand words, then you have seen about a million words. But more than that, you have seen an absolutely bizarre finish of game six of the 1986 World Series. The Mets are not only alive, they are well and will play the Red Sox in game seven tomorrow. That was what Vin Scully said on NBC three minutes after the Miracle Mets won game six on this night in 1986. Now the answer to my opening question. The youngest pitcher to throw a complete game shutout in a World Series was Jim Palmer of the Orioles, who was the oldest to do the same. Answer, Randy Johnson of the Arizona Diamondbacks at age 38 years, one month and 18 days. He did it against the Yankees. Have a great week. Till Friday, be a good sport and stay loose. Cubs in five. Mondays can be a big headache. Well, cheer up with Bottleneck's Little Neck Clam Special. $1.95 a dozen in melted butter. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the MPB community players will be presenting their annual holiday pageant, Our Christmas Gift, in December, and they are seeking performers who would like to be involved in the production. A sign-up session and meeting will be held Thursday, October 27th at 7 p.m. at Most Precious Blood Church Basement that is located in Hazleton. Performance dates for the Christmas program are December 4th at 2 p.m. at Catholic Social Services and also December 11th at 7 p.m. at Most Precious Blood Church. Both shows serve as benefits for those venues. For info, just call 570-401-6679. Our next announcement, Schuylkill Haven will be holding a Halloween parade Tuesday, October 25th at 7. They'll also be having a haunted house at the Senior Neighborhood Center at 340 Haven Street. The haunted house is Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 11. For more info, visit havenrec.com slash Halloween. Next announcement, the Rotary Club of Hazleton will be holding its annual spaghetti dinner Wednesday, October 26th at Gennetti's. Eat-in or takeout is available from 4.30 to 7 p.m. and also be having a cash bar and tricky trays. Tickets can be purchased from any Rotary member or by calling 570-501-3700. And finally, the Survivors After Suicide Loss Support Group hold their meetings the second and fourth Tuesday of each month from 6 to 7.30. The meetings are held at Catholic Social Services in Hazleton. It's a no-fee open grief group that welcomes survivors at any stage of their grieving process. For info, just call 570-455-1521. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Paul Peter Ballin, formerly of Hazleton, services are Friday at 11 a.m. in the St. Casimir Cemetery and under the direction of the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Joanne Brobes of Hazleton, funeral is Wednesday at 11 a.m. from a family home on Thurwell Avenue. Friends may call at that home Monday and Tuesday from 2 to 9 p.m. and the Firo Funeral Home is assisting the family. And Michael Pupach Jr. of Harley, Funeral is Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Monday from 6 to 9 p.m. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Jim Limonati of Hazleton. Jim, if you're watching, give us a call 570-455-7267, extension 104. Tomorrow's a busy day on FYI. We'll have local tennis highlights. We'll also get ready for Game 1 of the World Series. And Kent Jackson is back from the Standard Speaker with an outdoor segment. We'll see you then. Have a good night, everyone. Take it easy.